Hi class, I wanted to make a quick video just talking about one of the concepts in chapter 20, uh, in chapter one that can be a little complicated, at least to visualize. So I wanted to do sort of a little hands-on video. So I wanted to talk about uh, anatomical planes, anatomical sections, anatomical cuts. So that's sagittal, coronal, or frontal, and transverse. So to fully understand anatomical planes and sections, you first need to have a good understanding of anatomical directions, as in anterior, posterior, superior, inferior. So make sure you have some familiarity with that, as that's the language that I'm going to use. We also need to have a basic understanding of anatomical position. So anatomical position, even though I'm sitting right now, would be similar to how you see me standing uh, with your legs extended, your arms extended, palms facing forward, looking forward. So that would be standard anatomical position. And you always assume we're talking about anatomical position with any sort of description that we use. So as I said, I want to, to discuss uh, anatomical directions, uh, excuse me, anatomical planes. And with anatomical planes, since the whole idea is, is how do we cut into a body to see internal structure? So the goal is how do we see internal structure? So you can kind of think of when you've seen an x-ray or specifically an MRI or a CAT scan, how are we seeing internal structures? And you see all of the images in your book are all about internal structures, which then means the, the next concept from doing anatomical planes or sections is anatomical views. So which direction uh, are you looking at? How are you looking at that structure? And specifically, where is the camera located? So when we talk about anatomical views related to anatomical planes, the view is saying, where is the camera located in reference to the object you're looking at? So to do my little example for anatomical planes or anatomical cuts, I want you to just kind of think about first that as we interact in the world, we are three-dimensional beings. So we interact in three dimensions. So there's three axes in our world. So if you think of like a math class and you think of the XY plane, well, you have two axes, the X axis and the Y axis that makes the XY plane. In three dimensions, we add a Z axis, which gives you depth. And so that would be that third dimension. So of course, we are three dimensions, we are three-dimensional, so you can dissect us in three different planes. And so very simply, those planes would be the sagittal plane, which goes like this. So here's my little knife. Sagittal plane, which goes like this. If you were to cut me straight down the middle or over here, but that's a sagittal plane. We have a frontal or coronal plane or cut this way. So you can see kind of cutting this way. And then a transverse, stereotypically, would be like right at your waist, but here or transverse this way. So to demonstrate our different cuts and planes, I want to use uh, some little Play-Doh uh, heads that I made. I'm calling them the Richardson brothers. So we have Rich Richardson, we have Richard Richardson, and then we have Wainwright. So when we go through our cuts here, let's first do a sagittal cut. So think about like you are a samurai warrior with your samurai sword and you are going to slice someone straight down the middle. So right between my eyes, right through my nose, mouth, sternum, all the way down. Specifically, this is called a mid-sagittal cut. Why? Because it goes right down the middle. And since we are bilaterally symmetric creatures, you can have basically an equal left and right half. So that's what you get from a mid-sagittal cut. You get an equal left and right half. And you could also do a parasagittal cut on the side. You could cut your arm off this way, but right down the middle would be mid-sagittal. These would be parasagittal. So the whole thing would be just considered a sagittal cut. So let's take Rich Richardson. Here, so we're gonna do a sagittal cut through Rich Richardson. Remember, the whole point of the cuts is to see internal structures. So uh, I'm at great sacrifice to myself. I am uh, mixing Play-Doh colors here. Uh, of course, that is a big no-no in the Nolan house, but uh, there is a save no expense for education. So here we go. I'm doing a mid-sagittal cut 
down the middle of Rich Richardson. So here we are. Sorry, his mouth fell off. He's a little smushed, but you can see I did a mid-sagittal cut between his eyes. And now watch this. When we do a mid-sagittal cut, of course, if I just remove the equal left and right halves, you haven't seen anything internal yet because this now relates to the view. As it stands right now, let's see uh, if I can put his mouth back. Oh, I cut through his mouth as well. Let's see. We'll just smush it on right there. So there it is. So as you are looking right now, this is an anterior view because you as the camera, you as the viewer, the camera is located anterior to Rich Richardson you're seeing his front surface, you are seeing his anterior surface. But of course, when we then separate it, that anterior view, you don't get to see the internal structure because you're looking from the front. So when we do a sagittal cut, sagittal cuts give us medial or lateral views because now notice what happens when I remove that half of his head, you now get to see the inside of his head, the purple organs inside his head. So this would be a lateral view because here's the anterior view. We then looked from the side and that is a lateral view. So you see that? So lateral, anterior. Of course, notice if you do a superior view and we separate, still nothing. So a sagittal cut gives you those lateral views. Okay, next will be a coronal or a frontal cut. Of course, this is at the side here. So a coronal or frontal cut gives you a front and back. It gives you an anterior portion and a posterior portion. We don't say that they are equal because we are not symmetric front to back. So you can have coronal cuts at different levels, but it does give you an anterior portion of your body and a posterior portion of your body. So here is Richard Richardson. And so we are going to do a coronal cut on him. So it will go this way. So here we are, I have done the cut. So here he is. And now notice, when we remove the front half, you are looking at an anterior view. And now you get to see inside his head from an anterior view because a coronal cut, this coronal plane, gives you an anterior view or it makes the anterior view useful because now you can see those structures. So of course, the same as if we turn it post. Whoops. Hmm. Just don't make Play-Doh like they used to. So if you look at a posterior view, we can remove it. And so then you can see that uh, posterior view as well. So the coronal cut gives you anterior. Mm. Need some sort of device to hold on to the Play-Doh. Poor Richard Richardson. It's been through a lot this morning. So that coronal cut gives you the anterior and posterior views. And then finally, we have Wainwright. With Wainwright, we are going to do a transverse cut. As we said, a transverse cut, also known as a cross section, uh, is a perpendicular cut to the long axis of the body or of that structure. So if I were standing up, you can think of cutting across somebody's waist. You could cut straight through the eyes this way. And obviously you can see from a transverse cut, it gives you a superior and an inferior portion. Once again, these are not equal because we are not symmetric superior uh, top to bottom, superior to inferior, but you still can have a transverse cut at different levels. So let's do that to Wainwright. Okay, so Wainwright is of course very sad right now. So you can see the cut, this is a transverse cut. So remember you are looking at an anterior view. So when we take off the top of his head, you still have not seen anything from an anterior view because a transverse cut gives you superior and inferior views. So here we are anterior, let's turn the view superiorly because now you as the camera are looking at the superior portion of his head or you are located superiorly to Wainwright. And now when we separate him, you can see inside the head that way. 
This is also true. So here we are anterior. This is also true from an inferior view. And then we can separate and you can now see the rest of his head matter from that direction. So a transverse cut gives you those superior and inferior views. Uh, the good thing is that they didn't lose any of their eyes uh, this, this go round. But that gives us, and so hopefully that, that kind of clarifies so you can see the relationship of the different cuts and planes, and then of course, which views that give. This is important because when you're looking at images in your book, and you need to read the captions because the captions will tell you this is an anterior view, this is a superior view, this is an inferior view, and so on. These different views will help you orient yourself when you're looking at those images because you need to know a right versus a left. When you think about right versus left, it's always in reference to the patient or it's always in reference to the object that you are looking at, not your right and left. And if you don't keep that straight, it's going to be confusing when you look at different images in your book. So really take the time to look at your captions and orient yourself so that the picture you're looking at will correctly match the text that you are reading.